Okay, so let's look at this example presentation. Again, a real presentation. Ah, okay, first slide. What do you guys think? Nasty background. Some kind of alien eyeball staring at us. Everything's in capital letters. Okay, good. Visually very difficult, right? The background is competing with the letters. It's hard to tell where the end, the top of the N is, and starts and ends, and just. What else? Yes, so there's misspellings. Good. <laughs> so the numbers look like they're, they're smaller. What's up with that, right? So we have 2010 is, is half the size of the R in the summer, and 1929 is, is a little bit better, but it's, it's different. So there's, there's something that looks a little strange about the alignment. If we just look at here, here's the bottom of the fonts da, 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 and then we hit these 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 toes down here which seems a little strange anything else orange dots what orange orange bullet points what like what why you know uh everything's in capitals that sucks there's, there's not space between, for example, the N and the start of the parenthesis. Anything else? I mean, if anything, they could have spaced out the board. Yes. Good. Okay, so this notion of white space, this notion of balance. So here we go. Here our, our working area goes from this side to this side, from the bottom down here to the top. Check it out. This looks, you take, this looks very, everything jammed on top, jammed on top, jammed on top, jammed on top. But yet we have this huge buffer, this huge chunk, right? Now this is a bit of a subjective call and this is always, always up to interpretation. But we want to in our presentations, be they graphs, be they PowerPoint figures, we want to balance, generally speaking, between what you might call white or negative space and positive space. So the space in which we have um, uh, letters, fonts, images, and the place where we don't have stuff. And this is just not well balanced. So in general, that, that's true. Then there's also additional things like, take a look at this. The Great Mississippi River Flood of 1927. This mean a real potential. <laughs> Right? I mean, so this is, let's assume this was spelled right and everything. Okay, that's, that's going to be hard to do. You know, in other words, this evapotranspiration, that's a real term. That's, gonna, that's hard to fit, right? But this, this is almost on one line, and then they, they went over. We could easily change this to something like 1927 Great Mississippi River Flood, right? And it would all fit on this one line. And then this would be we'd lose this we'd have this up we could maybe make the the font maybe slightly larger or whatever but the idea is we can make it much more evenly balanced some people have the need to they want to make every single bullet a sentence that's not needed in a powerpoint and indeed in many of our posters that will not be needed it's not wrong if you if you decide you want to put in a full sentence, but generally speaking, we don't need um, a full sentence in these things. And so we therefore can be a bit, uh, you know, fragmenty and, and more phrasing, more of a phrase than a full sentence in these, in these things. Okay, so there's that. Oh, says everybody, that hurts my eyeballs. Can't even really read that, right? I mean, it just sort of kind of gives you a seizure a little bit. <laughs> Capital, mentors, David Welch. And then it gets into the text. And then it's one, right? Wow. Ouch. S uh, assuming this was, now there are times we want to put perhaps a lot of quote, uh, a lot of text. Maybe perhaps we're quoting the president or we're, or there's some important 
phrase. And so that might mean something that we want to put more than the, the typical amount of um, text up there. But what happens when I put this text up, when I'm standing next to the slide? What do you do? Uh, right. So now you're, I'm, I'm trying to talk to you and lead you through my, we have a limited amount of time in front of my poster, limited amount of time in front of my, my, uh, my lecture here. And instead of you listening to me and have me direct you through the, the information, the data, the whatever, you're talking about David Welch is a development and operations ideology. And all of a sudden you're this and you're not paying attention to me. So that's not a good thing. Obviously, we should never have one of these kind of textured or patterned backgrounds. That almost always sucks. And in this case in particular, the green is very difficult, very hard to, to read. Um, in, in contrast with all that stuff. Also notice that it's left justified. And so it is a block of text, but it's not a, it, it just is very visually bleh. Oh, poor David Reed. Again, capital letters. Oh my God, that sucks. Notice that most of these fonts have been serif fonts. And I told you guys, you guys should be using sans serif, right? So non-footed, so we shouldn't have this, you know, the, the types of uh, fonts that have E's with the extra lips and the A's with the extra lips. That makes it even harder to read. And in this case, <laughs> like some kind of bubblegum psychic barf or something, right? I mean, it's just bleh. Impossible to read. Oh, that looks better. Oh, no. Animation. You never want to have animation. Right. Oh, more animation. Oh, more animation. Oh, more animation, animation, animation. Generally speaking, no animation. Right? You can have you have something appear if you're trying to lead someone through, but don't do this fly in. Don't do this dissolve in. Just appear. And definitely don't have these sounds and these, you know, animated stuff. So again, problem with the bolded or the excuse me, the all capital letters. Again, it's a serif font. Um, and then check it out. So we have bold, and then we have underline, and we have bullets. So again, this orange bullets. It's, what's up with the orange bullets? This guy's doing something with, I guess he likes President, Bo uh, President um, Trump or something. So, so hard to read, right? Generally speaking, don't want to use underlines. So use italics. Use bold when you need to emphasize something. Possibly use a slightly different color, but the underline generally is not the best uh, technique. The underline was invented when we had typewriters, and we wanted to, you know, call out something as say Latin or whatever, and you type it, and then you're you're trying to emphasize it. You go back and put the underline in. So generally speaking, with our modern word processors we can do it better with italics, we can do it better with bold. So let's leave the underlining off. Oh, what is that? That's computer models. Oh, impossible to read bold, impossible to read bold, lame animation. Oh, more horrible crud. Yeah, okay, thanks dude. Oh, that's maybe a moth? I don't know, it's sort of psychedelic. Uh, forecast locations. I think we saw this last time. Oh, look at that. Mmm, that horrible graph that we had a hard time figuring out what it was last time. It's back. Uh, some type of alien cell, I guess. Oh, slowly appear. Oh, table. Lame. Screenshot of Excel, right? You guys would never do something so lame as that. And what is this supposed to show us? I don't know. This guy did a lot of work. Right? You guys need to resist the temptation of, and I, I totally understand it. You guys have been working for a long time on your research. You want to tell everybody you've been working on your research for a long time. Look at all the stuff I did. Nobody cares. I, I'm really sorry to say nobody cares if you spent five years, seven years, whatever. They just want to know what the answer is. So doing something like this, which solely has the purpose of saying, I did a lot of work, it, 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 is, it doesn't reflect well on you, right? Um, if someone wants to ask how you did it, then you can tell them that, yeah, I spent five years collecting this stuff and, 
and uh, and it was it was a you know long arduous process. Then they can you can tell them that, but don't go into that kind of excruciating detail. Oh, some kind of Martian, I don't know. Oh, lame, and yet another thing. And then at least look at it. he actually cited the Something. mental barf this is whatever it is right so that's good he referenced who we, where the fractal thing came from look at f test oh now we've center aligned the text and because we want to, apparently want to try that now and then we put another table in there how lame is that oh some type of Jackson Pollock thing going on. Oh, at least, at least now we can sort of kind of read the text. Uh, and then he they tells us something we already should know. So, oh, but he does the table again. How lame is that? Some type of lightning black hole. I don't know what that is. And then, oh, now it's back to this dark, hard to read. And, oh, what? Really? Right. You guys are not allowed to use Excel. It's too lame for graphing, right? But here's a great example of lame Excel graphs. So, um, you know, everything about this is messed up. The spacing is bizarre. Why these, you know, why these uh, values hard to read jammed up. These guys are, are 45 degree angle, hard to read. Um, just everything about this is, you know, why is there a line between these two? Why is there a line? between what, What's that line thing? Why is this a date? But then the date has zeros in there, the timestamp. It's just everything about it is lame. And this is called the month, but it's presumably November of 2009, presumably December of 2009, but just really, really um, horrible. Oh, but it gets worse. Look at that. That's some kind of tribute to Prince's passing or something. <laughs> And then we have conclusions. Again, all the bold. Now it's really bold. The data shows. Da, 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 da. I can't even read what the data shows. Right? And then more of just impossible to read. And then we're back to the aliens. And oh man, slow animation. Oh God, now things are appearing. And then more crud, hard to read. And then, oh yes, that's so great. What did I learn? What are the skills I obtained? horrible now, now we have a, a, a sentence apparent apparently gain more insight on using excel period and then something about gis period something about models and parameters and the weather periods another and then the complexities is off the screen somehow i mean this guy is pulling out all the stops of lameness and then you know what and then it just flashes. I don't know why you'd want it to flash. And then, oh, there's this guy. And then he disappears. Why, what? Why did that guy disappear? And then there's some kind of psychedelic smoke. <laughs> and then, you know, my, my internship was great. How proud would you be to have this person as your intern, right? I mean, like, oh, my God. So what's happened here is I believe this person has used, instead of the bullet, is used the actual circle <laughs> circle font uh, that's or a circle character that's gone in there um, and so just visually again not knowing what's going on here just visually squinting at this there's something weird alignment here so that just looks messed up even even if the text was just perfect and everything so no, let's not do that oh he did it again that's great oh and then they enjoyed his summer and I really want to thank some people and oh man we're, we're spinning and then Noah's flying in, something called Nig is flying in, Gina. And, and poor Gina's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be associated with this. And then Jessica's, oh man, sorry. And then, yeah, yeah. Oh man, it's like I'm going through a time tunnel. Okay, here's, here's some other figures. Let's take a look at this. So I would argue this is a good figure. Now maybe the maybe the arrows are a little a little too fat, the tips or something, but check it out. Now I can put this graphic up and I now normally we want a title and all that, but compare it to that some of that stuff we were just looking at. Here I can stand up in front, I can point my pointer and say, this is a root, this is a plant root, and here's some mycorrhizal hyphae, and you know. Uh, and I can lead you through and it's really clear, right? We're not cluttered by too much descriptor. You're listening to me 
as I walk you through that. So I'd, I'd argue that's an example of a, of a you know, effective slide. What about this? Effective or not effective? It's funny because some people last week were telling me, oh, yeah, we really want like the light background and the dark, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how quickly you guys come to see things. Okay, so, so you think maybe you'd like it slightly darker, the background? Is that what you're saying? Just, just or a lot darker? Okay, we like it a lot darker. Just duller. Yeah. Okay. So I think the idea, well, I mean, so this is, this is from, so I, the, the horrible thing was one presentation. This is, this is uh, uh, a, an excerpt from an, a, a regular presentation. So I think what was going on this one, not that you guys would know that, I think all the titles were yellowed and then the, the fonts were, or then the uh, bullets were, were white. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't justify it, but, but I, think, I think it was following a pattern. <laughs> following a pattern. Um, what about... So the does flow explain fish abundance. Uh, that looks like that's bolded. So probably didn't need to do that. Probably better to have it not bolded, but then have the font be maybe a little bit bigger. But in general, what do you think about this? If this slide. A color. So this would be, say, like the, one of the lead-in slides where I'm, where I'm explaining what my talk is about, let's say. And I say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explore how explore if, if flow explains fish abundance, if light explains fish abundance, and then what's the relative importance of each. So those would be stated as question, uh, stated as you know, an actual s sentence. And so that can work out. I said before you didn't need to, but that can work out. And there's questions. So questions, what do you get? Actually, well, I'll save that for the next slide. Okay, so what, what about the negative space here? What about, what about, what about uh, is there, do you like the, I mean, maybe you don't like the colors of the slide, but what do you think about the balance of the letters versus non-letter space? I think there's too much space on the bottom. Okay, so you'd want this to be maybe, maybe a little bit more space between each of the yeah. sentences or something, so this goes down a little bit lower? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, it means you mean, 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 mean center justify them, yeah. center align them, okay, possibly. And and right, so that would be a great one. Try it. Maybe it looks better that way. Maybe it doesn't look better. But but that's a good one to you know. T let's tweak. Let's try this. A B. Anything else? Okay. How about this? Okay. So Maggie says it doesn't say much. So is it bad to have a coloring book up there? So let's start with alignment. What do you guys think about the alignment of this? So you think the photo's not centered? I mean, because I'm assuming the whole, the whole white part is the photo or whatever. Right. Screenshot they did. And then the black behind it is the presentation. Right. So, so this... So this throws us, in this case, this geometry is, is perhaps throwing us off a bit. Because this is so nice and regular. Check it out. It, it's really, it's right near the edge, right? It's, it's whatever, I call that an inch or a millimeter, whatever it is. But it's, it's one unit right from the edge. One unit from the edge. But then this is fairly far from the edge. And then this visually looks like it's far from the edge, right? It looks, it looks like it's, the thing is, is pushed to the right. But if we look at all the elements, if we say, if we include this um, uh, yucca as the, um, as part of the element, it's fairly, it's not that bad, right? It's fairly close to the edge. The problem is that this ge geometric pattern is what we're really queuing in on. And this is sort of an ancillary thing. So, so it looks shifted to the right, even though maybe theoretically, you know, based on elements of the artist, this is not that Un, uneven and then to add it this alignment is actually center aligned but it's center aligned around the um, box right 
So, so if we just look at this space, this is a line right in the bottom. If the whole PowerPoint slide was white, it wouldn't look as bad, but it would still, it would still, it, it, the, the sort of balance of really, really evenness with with uneven. It's not bad. I mean, it's a stylistic thing, but it just visually it it seems to be off. What about what is it telling us? What is what is this graphic telling us? That's what it would look like. What would look like? The interpretive trail, right? So, so look, here's an interpretive tra trail. Here's a group of school kids interpreting, right? So here, this graphic is telling us something. And then down here in words, or in the title, say, it's telling us what it's doing, just like what we said with our figures, our quantitative figures. So there's no quantitative data here, but it's the same idea, right? We get a message from the meat of the visual, and then the title is summarizing, it's reinforcing that, right? So it's talking about something, it's showing us something. Cool? What about this figure? Do you think this is an effective figure? Okay, sure, right. So so maybe you're explaining it in... in um, the one thing I, did, I haven't mentioned to you guys yet, but when we put this figure up, so when you have a figure and it's on your poster and you're standing next to your poster, when you're given a PowerPoint and you're standing up giving your presentation, the first thing I'm going to do before I even talk about what the data is or anything, I'm going to orient you to my figure every time. Or if I have four figures that are going to follow in order that they're going to follow the same pattern, I'm going to say, let me, let me tell you how this my next four figures is, are going to go. Let's start with the x-axis. On the x-axis right here, this, me, this is my measure of time. And I'm measuring this in hours. It's going from uh, just the beginning to either four or five hours, depending on which plot. Then on the y-axis, I'm measuring how open the stomata are on my plant leaves, going from um, basically closed to widely open. Then I'm going to go talk about the data. So I'm first going to contextualize what the figure is showing, explain what those axes are, explain what I measured, and then go in. So now the person, isn't, otherwise the person, visually you guys probably started staring at these colors. This is a blue line thing here, there's a red line thing here, and I'm kind of, what's going on? I don't know, my eyes are up, down, but by now by coming up and forcing you to look at this, by using a pointer or my finger or whatever. I draw your attention, you understand. And then we go to this axis, we understand. And then we explain over here. And then we say, as you can see, you know, this isn't my slide, but yeah, something to the effect of, as we can see, red light um, uh, qu uh, relatively quickly um, got the stomata to open and then they asymptoted. Blue light had a very had a distinct response, and then it also asymptoted, but with much higher uh, openings on the stomata, right? And then we can go forth. So note this doesn't have a uh, top axis. This doesn't have a right axis. Is that is that bad? Do you guys like that? Do you not like that? What do you think? So I, I don't think it's bad either. Again, the, the differences here are so, so large. We don't necessarily need um, grid lines, I would say. And we don't necessarily need the top or the bottom. It's, again, always an aesthetic choice, always an individual choice. But I think in this case, this works. One other thing I want to point out, I could have pointed out in some of the other slides, I'll just point it out here, is this, um, and this is, I was taught this by Edward Tufte, but the notion of um, why. Always ask why we do this. So a lot of our visual design comes from the fact that you've just been conditioned to see something. So for example, Microsoft uh, really has had a huge impact on how we think about things. When we put a bullet point in, Microsoft capitalizes by default the first letter of the first word. When we insert a text box, capitalize the first letter of the first word. Why? Is blue a, a proper noun? No. Is red a proper noun? No. Is time a proper noun? No. Right? 
but yet we have this sort of inherent, well, it's the first thing, so we should start with a capital letter. Why? So if you, look at, if you go back and look at m most of my graphs, you'll see that my ax, the, the, you know, if this was mine, time would be a lowercase t, so, so model would be a lowercase s. And some people, that really bothers them. Yeah. Right. So people like Aspen, it really bothers her. And so if you, you don't have to do that, right? You, you do what you feel comfortable. But I would argue that that is, try it. I think you should try it next time. Maybe you don't like it, but it's just like cutting off the axis. Let's drop the top axis. No, I think I actually needed it. Let's put it back in. But let's try it, right? And to try, you really have to change it. You can't just visually say, well, what if? You need to take it off and stare at it. So try it with a B, lowercase b for the blue, and lowercase r for the red, right? Maybe we don't need the arrow. Maybe we don't need this arrow pointing to blue. Maybe we can just make this font blue light and put it next to here, and this, and this red, you know, this red light, this red font red, and put it next to here. Maybe that would be enough, right? So experiment. That's right. Although red blue is not really a colorblind thing, but right, red green would be, but um, but uh, right. So if you're worried, if we were doing say red green, maybe it really maybe we did green light, maybe we did red light. So of course that's what we should use. That makes sense. But then I would maybe make the green a dotted line, right? So it would be really uh, distinct that if our friends that are colorblind would still be able to see it. Okay. How about this? Uh, okay, so this was, I think, a diagram of an of a experiment. So this was sort of the the before we show the results when we're telling people what we did. And so, what are the problems with it? They're not lined up. The like boxes are. Okay, so this is this is like say treatment condition this one, treatment condition two, treatment condition three. And then maybe this is, I don't know, the number of, maybe this is the, the results maybe, maybe this is the number of replicates inside each of these plots or something. Um, but the nine is clearly, it's, it's touching the bottom of the box and a huge amount of negative space above it. So it just looks, again, if, even if this is in a foreign language, it would look a little strange to us, right? Okay, so that should be centered. Okay, okay. So yeah, so, so things aren't, I think these things are aligned, but I think there's just a fat. I, th I think the extra bounding bounding box makes it too thick. But 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 right. But fair enough. It doesn't look lined up, and that's the important thing, right? Oh, you know what it is. I think the ones that have a black background actually have a dark blue border, so it looks like the box is higher. But yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So all that stuff that that you, this might be lined up, you know, using the the alignment tool, but because of the borders, it it looks. Off. Okay, good. What else? Why are there different colors to begin with? Like, why are the boxes on colors? Oh, I think it was supposed to represent different treatments, but but sure. But you don't know why. Okay, so why is this hatched versus this clear versus this solid? Okay, good. What else? Difference between those. So you mean you want to see like plot and then one, two, three or something, or what? First trial, second trial, third, or something like that. Okay. So this is a regular font. This is italicized. Why is this italicized, right? Yeah. Similarly, we could probably have weak on, you know, maybe turn 90 degrees weak, and this could be one, two, three, four, five, six, or something, yeah. right? We don't need to see weak one week every single time. Good. Um, and then plot one is looks to be, I mean, Maybe you guys don't like the word plot one, but plot one at least is basically center aligned over the box, right? But then week one is, it's actually slightly lower than the, right? It, it, it's, so if, if, we drew, if we drew the center line here of that font, it's not center lined with the nine, right? So, so this is just visually, um, a vertically, it's not, it's not aligned right, so that's weird. So it italicized, not italicized, blah, 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 blah. Here, in this case, Cove Experiment, capital C, capital E, does that really need to be capitalized? I, I personally would say probably not, but anything else? Okay. How about this? Effective graphic, not effective graphic. 
more details. Okay, so a lot of negative space, right? There's a lot of, like right, right here, for example, there's nothing. Right here, there's nothing. Right here, there's nothing. Right here, there's nothing. Right here, there's nothing. Right, good. Okay, so you're, you're saying this color planula egg is the same color as this, so maybe have this in a slightly grayish or something, some other yeah, so tone or something. Okay, that's good. So you, you so you, uh, okay, good question. So the question is, uh, is so Maggie's thinking this is the start of the story, and why is that in the lower right quadrant? That maybe she expects it to be here or here. So that, I mean, maybe, maybe. But if it's just a picture, that's not something that they could have helped really, yeah. so I don't know. But, but I would say it's actually, again, what are we talking about? Showing us something visual, telling us what we're seeing. We could have egg, planula, right? And then, and then march on through the life cycle like that. I could have it in a line. But the artist has chosen to put this in a circle, right? So the idea that these things are, it's, it's a cyclical like, pattern. And then down here, we talk about the Aurelia life cycle. So the words, just like an effective title telling us what we're seeing, what the data is, what the pattern in the data is, and, and that Chumash um, uh, interpretive science, the same thing, right? So it's the same philosophy, even though one is data, one is a cartoon, one is a diagram, but it's that same idea. So. I'm showing you what you're seeing, and I'm telling you what you're seeing, right? Reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. So another thing I, you might, we might want to consider here is, uh, uh, you know, there's a decent amount of white space here, a decent amount of white space here, but maybe we could knock this down a half a line more maybe, right? So a really a life cycle sets it off just a little teeny bit more maybe from that. And that might also help with, well, Aspen's kind of a little bit worried that this, uh, the, the scythe right here and the R for the Aurelia, they're, they're kind of close. Maybe that would also help set them off. But in general, I think, I think this is an effective figure, right? It's not overly cluttered. It's, it's giving us the, the key piece of information. It has some labels on there, but we're not, we're not overly burdened. It's not a thousand different lines and that kind of stuff. Okay? All right, so that's a little bit, that's a little, uh, little bit of looking at some of these things.